So in this episode, we're gonna have a think about how to calculate changes in energy. So the equation for the kinetic energy stored is the kinetic energy equals half of the mass times by the velocity squared. So again, kinetic energy equals half times by the mass times by the velocity squared. So mass, we need to know what units that these, are going, they, these uh, variables are going to be in. So kinetic energy is me measured in joules. Mass is measured in kilograms. And velocity needs to be measured in meters per second. So if we, need to th if we think about two things that have the same velocity, and we're trying to work out which one has a larger kinetic energy, what do you think, uh, the, what do you think the factors that will, will influence that? If you remember the equation is kinetic energy equals half times by mass times by velocity squared. Well, if the velocity is the same, the mass is what changes the kinetic energy. So if you've got two things and they're traveling at the same velocity, you know that the heavier of those two, two things will have a higher kinetic energy. So for example, if you've got a dog and a guinea pig traveling at the same velocity, the dog will have higher kinetic energy. If you have an elephant and a mouse uh, traveling at the same velocity, the elephant will have higher kinetic energy because it's heavier. So if we've got the kinetic energy uh, of a frog and we want to work it out, so say the frog, cost, uh, frost, frog weighs um, one kilogram and um, it's traveling at five meters per second. So remember the equation is kinetic energy equals half mass times velocity squared. Now the units are correct for this example because we've got uh, kilograms and meters per second already. So we just do half of one times five squared, that's mass times the velocity squared, which is 12.5 joules. So to recap, the kinetic energy, which is measured in joules, is equal to half of the mass in kilograms Time by, times by the velocity in meters per second squared. Now, the other, another type of um, energy that you need to know how to calculate is gravitational potential energy. So you need to know that the change in gravitational potential energy equals the mass multiplied by the gravitational field strength multiplied by the change in height. So that is then measured in joules. Now, gravitational field strength sounds scary. It's not. It's just a, a number that you need to know, um, which will be given in your exam. So if the mass of an object is 10 kilograms, the gravitational field strength is 8 meters per second to the minus 2, sorry, meters uh, per second squared and the change in height is three meters, what is the change in gravitational potential energy stored? So remember we do mass times gravitational field strength times by the change in height. So mass is 10, gravitational field strength is eight, and the uh, change in height is three meters. So overall we do 10 times eight times three, which will give you 240 joules. And just to recap that equation again, so the gravitational potential energy is equal to the mass multiplied by the gravitational field strength multiplied by the change in height. And that gives you the gravitational potential energy measured in joules. A third energy store that you need to know how to calculate is the elastic potential energy. So the elastic potential is equal to half of the spring constant which we, call, which we denote as K in the, um, in the equation, and that's measured in newtons per, me, newtons per meter, and that's multiplied by the extension squared, extension in meters. So the spring constant times by the extension squared. So if you've got a spring with a constant five newton, newtons per meter, um, spring constant and it's stretched by someone until it's extended for one meter 
if you're trying to work out how much elastic potential energy that has stored in that spring, you would do half times by the spring constant times by the extension squared. So the spring constant is 5, the extension is 1. So you do half times 5 times 1 squared, which will give you 2.5, and the units is joules. So another example, if we want to calculate the elastic potential energy of a spring that's been extended 10 centimetres, given that the spring constant is 6 newtons per metre. Now remember, this, the elastic energy is um, a half times by the spring constant times by the extension squared. Now, if we substitute in the values we know, it's a half times by the spring constant, which is 6 newtons per metre, times by the extension, which is 10 centimetres, but we've got to do it in metres, so it would be 0 0.1 metres. And we then calculate, so a half times 6 times by 0 0.1 squared will give us 0 0.03, and the units are joules. Another example to think of from one of the earlier um, equations that we looked at. So if the mass of an object is 5 kilograms and the gravitational field strength is 2 meters per second squared and the change in height is 5 meters, what is the change in gravitational potential energy? Well, if you remember, the gravitational potential energy is the mass times by the gravitational field strength times by the change in height. So the mass, 5, times by the gravitational st field strength, 2, times by the change in height, 5, that will give us 50 joules. And can you remember the elastic potential energy and how to calculate that? Well, remember the elastic potential energy is elastic potential energy, sorry, is that equals the spring constant in newtons per meter, and it's multiplied by the extension squared.